soon. And we're going to cut right to it. It seems as far as the comps go, it's pretty standard play. For oh, and that's the Umbre dying off to the pop. So uh, surprise, surprise. You've got to watch out for those. This is Mekomar. Anything can kill you. <laughs> uh, you're in arms reach of everything on this map. And that's going to be a strong start for Azure getting three kills. And they are already moving up with the armor. Um, they are putting all the pressure on. Look at them moving as a one unit right here. Trying to try, just the Rainmaker just sneaking by. Making it all the way to 22. Mudcup still alive. You're getting another pick. That's another three down. The ball point is kind of behind. They can kind of just pressure the ball point and move the Rainmaker right now. Ah, uh, but he... It looked like a little bit of a misinput from Rafa there. I'm not Ready? sure what happened, but Umbre now able to get a couple kills and kind of getting some time to breathe here. That could have right. went a lot worse. It looked like it was going to go a lot worse with just Umbre alive, but able to do what he needs to do and and uh, get them back into it. Also, two Neo, spl two Neo Splashes? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay. This is going to be a fun one. Mega Wars really fun for uh, for battles like this because, like, walls are fake on this map. Nothing is really safe, especially if you're willing to just press forward, and if, especially if you have your team backlining for you. You can just press onward no matter how well organized you are. Yeah. So Komodo staying alive, trying to get themselves back to uh, neutral positioning. Yeah. Pixel this is just trying to wait for some support so they can get something going here. Um, oh, you put a fine mud cup kind of in a, in a bad position, kind of getting lucky with that. I'm not sure if he saw it, but it, it was fortunate for him, but he's kind of getting back into a corner now. As a no map control coming from that pick. Ink Storm forcing players off the uh, Rainmaker now. I'm really curious to see, like, what's, like, what's the purpose of what they're doing right here? Because they're very clearly, like, they just want to press forward. They're looking to get their picks, position themselves better, and just let it rock. Meanwhile, Komodo is making a very active effort to make sure that Let's the map pixel. has ink control in their favor. And a few picks lets them start to run the Rainmaker for the yep. first time. And there, Pixel is going to be doing his frontline job, trying to get that pick, able to find it. But the torpedo, I think, or a suction bomb uh, coming through and picking him off. That's going to be a full wave from Komodo. Um, very well reaction. Very good reaction. Very well. From Azor, as they're able to uh, try and reestablish map control. Push to 69, very nice from Komodo. Copilot trying to hold center state. I actually really like the way that Azure is holding the uh, the center. They're staying very active. And while Copilot seems to be taking to the high ground often, as is pretty commonplace for control of Mako Mart, uh, all members of Azure are just trying to rotate as often as they can. Absolutely. It's keeping Komodo from getting a pick on their positioning. And yep. that's super important because Komodo's the type of team that like they'll figure out what your habits are, communicate it to each other. And just break, just, just split you open. Yep. So, Azure is doing a good job. I mean, I think they definitely have weapons that will give things like Enzap and Splash problems, not the best slaying weapons. So they're using that to their advantage. Uh, we've seen things like Mud Cup, you know, kind of laying low, waiting for somebody to come within his reach and just jump on him. And that's what uh, Azure is kind of doing well right now. Umber almost getting picked up by a bomb. Very dangerous here. That's a blast pushing up. Umber able to back up and. Get this, get the pick as Pixel over there on the other side of the map. Ends up getting picked up by Mudcup, and he's just gonna move right on up. Get another kill. Mudcup playing very strong right now. It's dangerous because like Komodo keeps on like they're almost ready to turn the reversal, and then they get their positioning split open. Mudcup with a really solid direct coming out of the ink jet, trying to move forward, ink a little bit more for Azure, and it just seems like Azure took that initial lead. And they just nailed it to the ground. They're like, this does not move. We don't need to push any further because you're not going to push any deeper. Yep, they're, they're just letting they're letting Komodo come to them, fall into their advantageous position. And now look, the pressure coming on. They got three down. They're going to they're gonna try to make this very hard. A splash kind of distracting two members of Azure here, forcing them to kind of back off and pushing the objective for a bit. But uh, that's... As uh, Mudcap gets picked off, they still have three people defending on the Rainmaker here on the right side. Let's see if they opt to let it reset. They do. And now the now the mid's kind of not being watched by Azur. Let's see if uh, Komodo can realize and take advantage of that. See, that whole team fight was so deep into Komodo territory that they weren't even, like, really well positioned to take advantage of how extended Azur was. Like, in any other situation, that would be, like, like a classic case of overextending your play and losing map control. But here... Komodo didn't know what to do. They were so deep into their own territory. They had to focus on breathing before they could do anything else. But they they did end up doing they did they they've done what they needed to do. They worked together. They saw that they could kind of get to mid. There was an opening for it. And now they this is their last chance. It's gonna be overtime here. They're gonna have to get to a 21. Um 
One of the front line is going to pick up. That's a Stinger. They're just going to have to try to move it. This is a very dangerous par for the Rainmaker. Stinger opting to move instead of going for the kill, but... They got boxed in. Pika ends up getting behind them, and as they're taking game one of this scrim... Uh, they're chilling. We chilling. We are chilling. We definitely came into this block ready to be super professional. Um, we were like, this is Genesis. Um, I don't want anyone. I don't like it's a scrim, but like, if I'm unprofessional, it's, it's too far in in the the realm of unprofessional. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I will get kicked out of the venue. We are, yeah, we are deep. <laughs> we are deep incognito mode right now. <laughs> Believe me, I, there's a lot I could be saying about Komodo <laughs> right now. <laughs> I love those guys, no. They're, I'm homies with all of them. They're, they're such a colorful gang of players. Because it's like, you, like yes, on the mic, we were able to to relish over their, their talent and their storied pasts. But when you know them off stage, when you know them like from behind the controller, they're a bunch of goons. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. really are. They're definitely, definitely that, goonies, dude. And that's something that's got to be appreciated. Because it's like a lot of the, the top-level play in Splatoon it, there's a lot more to it than them just being good players. Like, they're also really good community members. They bring a lot of character to competitive Splatoon, and I feel like that's what makes competitive Splatoon, like, so open, so, such an inviting environment yeah. for players of different games or people who are new to Splatoon, because it's like, you see these people who, who tower over certain other players in skill level, but they're still human. They still tell jokes. They are still someone at the end of the day. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, Hitzel, he comes from a Halo background, MLG background. Um, he's he's always, I mean, he's always been there to help community members. And I mean, he's a he's a he's just a personable guy. Um, DJ is, a, is a, actually another TO with GSM. Yep. Helps run, you know, there's a grant, GSM Grand Prix going on. I don't know if, I, if I'm, I'm plugging other organizations. But it's, it's fine. It's we all, won't plug? It's all in the community. Um, if we're plugging, come to Beacon. Yeah, you, you, you would, you would I, I you want that. That's, that's, your, that's, that's your area. That's my home. <laughs> that's my home. Um, but, yeah, just um, these Splatoon events are great. These, these, these tournaments that here at Genesis, Beacon, DPG, all these kind of tournaments, they just show off how, you know, wonderful the community can really be, how how much just love goes into the game from a lot of these players. Uh, Mansa Maria zones here. Uh, this is a very interesting map. What is your take on it? This combo's gross. This combo's <laughs> gross because it gets bloody really quickly. And both teams came packing really good heat for controlling the map. Like, it, there's a heavy emphasis on backline here. And that's with very good reason. Absolutely. This this map can be very stally, but it can also be very hard to break back. It is very hard to break back into. And um, really, you have to just kind of string along a solid, solid control. You got to kind of just... Get points on the board one at a, like one at a time because it's it's hard to maintain both of these zones for a long period. If you can do that and then proceed to stall out the game, that's what you see a lot in this map. Get a lead and and try to just fend them off, not overextend. Try to keep them out your side. Just kind of hold on. We see Pika moving all the way up with the slosher right now. Um, this is gonna be a, a a lot of pressure. This is what I'm talking about. Very hard to break back into when control starts happening. Um, that's kind of why you see the stally play sometimes. It's just so difficult to break out of your uh, your spawn in this map. Yeah. Because you're very limited in your options. You have kind of this street area, which you could try to go to bunker, but you have to climb that wall. You can try to go to the shortcut on left, but you're pushing right into their side. Um, if there's one positive aspect of Monster Maria that I have to press, it's the fact that it invites itself to three-dimensional ink control in a way that I feel like not a lot of other maps do. Like, it's super important to keep in control on the walls yep. for a larger variety in positioning. Like, yeah, getting absolutely. yourself to the high ground is super important for this map, and a lot of that has to do with being able to traverse the walls. And if you take that away from uh, the opposing team, they really can't get anywhere here. Absolutely, and that's a very strong game from Azure. Two Up 2-0 in the scrim. Wow, look at that. Not the kind of close game we saw last set. I'm hoping Komodo, game, there's two ways Komodo could take this. They could be like, glad this was a scrim, or this can leave them with a sour taste entering their wave. Yeah, I know. Which uh, I really hope that's not Komodo the case. Komodo definitely, you know, they can definitely be some salty players sometimes. I know them. They, they, uh, 
They might let things get to them, so I hope they don't. This is all practice. They, they can take away a lot from this, even if it's just a scrim. And I know they're probably trying new things out, too. I know that, that double splash is probably more of an idea and less of we're going to do this for sure. Um, I feel like that's the best thing about seeing scrims from high-level teams like this, because like you get to see the ideas while they're still stewing. Yep. Like you get to see, well, maybe this will work, or like the meta's not in a like the game just recently updated, so the meta's in a spot right now where it's like yeah, there's a lot that could change, there's a lot that could like come about that's brand new. Yeah. So you get to see that as like in mo like you get to see the experiment in motion. Absolutely, and it's 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 great to see. Um, but we're gonna have to see some adjustments from Komodo if they want to, you know, do better here in this scrim. Um, I wonder if it's a best of five, or if they're just gonna go until maybe two. Just keep going maybe until go Irik like it. shuffles them off I'm the a, stage. I'm assuming they're gonna get pushed out by two, or two p.m. Uh, local. PSG. If they if they are allowed to burn the clock that long, uh, we still got plenty of uh, time That's for minutes. them. Because. Uh, I mean, we're we definitely had a schedule, and they're not going to start the wave early. Right, and um, and good on EGTV for being able to run their pool so efficiently to go ahead of schedule like this. This is, this is great. This is going out. This is going great. We've we know lands are are a struggle for anything. Smash, Splatoon, any community. It's, lands are tough work. Like, there's a myriad of tech issues that could stop a the flow of a tournament. But if you're able to keep, keep like constant countermeasures and just plan accordingly, and you just got the ball rolling so well, it just gives you time to relax. Like this is a good time just to see relaxed play from two really good teams. Who honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we get to see them tomorrow. Oh, for um, sure. we get to see some more unorthodox play, and there's there's no stakes on the line here. They get to play at their leisure. And it's not like they're going to take it any less seriously as far as they play. They're still good players, so there's plenty to learn from watching. See, I, I, I love the comp we see from Komodo here. Um, I, I think Jet is um, underrated and only kind of getting better as time goes on. I think, uh, especially with the ballpoint nerf, and it got a, it got a slight buff recently, the Jet did. Um, I think it has a lot to offer, as well as just um, Kenzo Machine, Kenzo Dooley is just such strong weapons. But also, uh, as they're doing, you know, things they're definitely very familiar with. Kent's umbrella is a strong weapon, both support and just being a pest. It's a pest to deal with a Kent's umbrella, um, armor, torpedoes, a shield that regenerates. It's so good for being able to stall. Like you, you brought up the idea of stalling the map earlier, and I feel like there are certain weapons that lend themselves so well to that style of play, and that combination works so well on just a singular unit so like you allow your team a lot of variety and being able to build around that yeah because one person builds so strong yeah it's 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 not just that you can stall with it it's that the other team needs to execute it they need to be coordinated to take care of it and they need to execute because if you mess up against the umbrella you're gonna pay for it you have to be able to work together against it and it, it's, it's just a weapon that lends itself to team play if you play as a team with a Kent's umbrella, you're going to be very strong. And if the other team does not play as a team against a Kent's umbrella, it's going to struggle. It, it forces team play, and that's what I like about it. And it was kind of a kind of a just a, a dog fight right now going on in mid. No solid control from either side. Uh, Azur going to be trying to use this Stingray to build some control with a blast regarding it. Uh, Komodo not able to get much map from it, even though they're kind of backed up there. This ball they're going to be coming out. It's finally trying to sniff it out. There's three people on that left side, maybe four now coming out from Azur. But DJ with uh, a bomb? That had to be. Those are picks from out deep. And even though what, what, Dooley Squelcher's what? got good range, and DJ's kind of nice with the Dooley Squelcher. Oh, points. oh, it was missiles. That's what it was. Ten of missiles. All I right. Word. You can see the kit in the corner. So, is yeah, this is also not something you see a lot. Point sensors, people don't really think highly of them because you're like, man, I can see the other team anyway. Why do I need point sensors? They can make, they can limit a lot of options from the other team just because when you're marked, people, look, I mean, people, you're, they can see you. So it's like, can I really approach when I'm marked like this? Right. You have to think a lot more because there is no element of surprise you can really work for. Point sensors, and, I feel, are like a really old school type of. Uh, support item Definitely. when it comes to any type of shooter shooter game because it provides you with information and that's like it's, it's a type of meta control because like yeah you could see across the field when you're looking at someone but having a literal line of sight to where they're positioned 
it, it gives you that, that little bit more of like, all right, they're positioned there against the wall, and you can make the call out to someone to focus that one person exactly yep. where they are. Yeah, you can, you can work to isolate that person. You can work to limit their movement. If you can see them, you can pre-fire on them. This is kind of a, a thing in other shooters, pre-firing. You can limit them before they can even shoot at you. And, uh, and missiles... We're still talking about this Dooley's kit. Missiles are another thing that kind of force movement. Work well in conjunction with point sensors because that's two ways of marking the other player. It's, it's very interesting, but Azur um, putting on a lot of control here. Copilot moving up. He has a stinger. He's probably going to uh, opt to use it soon, I would imagine. I think waiting for them to respawn. He needs to get back on tower is his priority because obviously the objective is to start moving. But uh, all his teammates kind of pushed up here. One of them goes down, but he covers his, his death. That's going to be armor. Another thing right from the other team coming out. This is so unfortunate for Copilot because he hasn't found a proper opportunity to bust the special. But I mean, he's doing he's doing what he needs to do with his main weapon, and that can work just as well. You don't always need to rely on a special. He's waiting for yeah. Another. This is a moment where he probably felt he could use it, and now the inkjet comes out as well. You have to dodge an inkjet and this thing where you're kind of going to have a hard time with that no matter what. And this is just sort of an idea in. Uh in higher level play where it's like that level of patience, like waiting for just the right time to use your resources is so important. Absolutely. Because there are a couple of times where the, the Stingray could have helped for holding the, that position, but deciding when to use it right then and there for pressing just a little bit further makes all the difference. Yeah, Pixel kind of being forced to use his ball here just to maintain the objective, but a ball is something that can fall off just like that, and that's what happened. Um, it was his last kind of ditch effort and uh, as they're able to just hold it off, and that's going to be a 3-0 lead in this scrim. 